Hey guys, welcome to my second Minecraft mod tutorial using Mod Loader. Now I'll be showing you guys how to make your own custom blocks generate naturally. So when you make your own map, you can go exploring and find your own custom created block. So first I'm going to open up Eclipse so we can edit the Java files. And then I'm going to open up my MCP file which is under the C drive. And then it's MCP underscore version 6. So if you watched my previous tutorials, you should have everything set up. So I'm going to open the mod we made in the previous tutorial, which is in the MCP file, under, in source, Minecraft, net, Minecraft, and finally source. And our mod we created was called mod underscore plutonium block dot java. And to make it generate... Uh, to make our block generate, all we have to do is pretty much we just have to add one method, which I'll show you. So open up modloader.java and also open up base mod.java. And I'm just opening these up so I can use them as a reference. And the uh, the other class that comes in uh, handy for opening up is a uh, it's called chunk provider generate.java and this is how I figured out how to make it generate and if you scroll all the way down to about line 350 there is a method called populate and what this does is it spawns all the blocks so if you look in these for loops here see this for loop generates dungeons this does clay and then these are the important ones um, if you look, it says this one spawns dirt, this one gravel, and coal. So we're just going to be using these as references, so I'll show you what some of these numbers mean in a second. But the first thing we want to do is, the way we're going to make it generate is if you come into base mod dot java, and there's a function called generate surface. And since our mod plutonium block extends base mod, or inherits from base mod, we're just going to override this method, so I'm just going to copy and paste it into my new class. And this is the function that's going to make our blocks generate. So it generates custom blocks. Just put a little comment there. And, okay, so first thing we're going to do is make a for loop. So we're going to say for, and I'm just going to declare a new variable and call it a integer a equals zero and while a is less than uh, I'm going to say 20 and a plus plus and then end the parentheses and then put a curly brace and we're going to put the rest of our code inside this for loop and this number 20 right here this is how rare it is so for example if you go to our reference class if you come down here to dirt it's 20 so, um, dirt's not, you know, very rare, obviously, so, now if you come down here to, uh, gold, see this is 2, uh, redstone is 8, and diamond is 1. Now, uh, this number doesn't necessarily, uh, isn't the only thing that affects how rare it is. See, for example, dirt has just as much as coal, and obviously coal is not as, uh, prevalent as uh, dirt, but um, this 32 and this 16 is what affects that, so I'll get to that in a little bit. And now we're just going to pretty much copy it line by line, so we're going to start with this first one here, and in our for loop we're going to say int position x equals i, i is defined in the function right here, so i plus random, and random is just a random object right here, dot next int and then 16 so um you yeah i would just leave it for a 16 so if you look in here most of them are 16 so i just don't mess with that so now our next one is going to be position y which in minecraft is actually the the normal z axis so the vertical axis so you're just going to say random dot next int and then 128. Now you can ch change uh, 128. This is the highest that 
your block will generate so it won't spawn over 128 about and it will start at 0 so it will go from 0 to 128 now if you want to make your block generate in between certain levels like for example from like 30 to 60 what you can do is you can add a plus here and make a minimum so plus 30 so that's going to guarantee that even if this randomly generated number is 0 it's going to be 30 and we have to change this now this instead of becoming the top becomes how high from the bottom so if we wanted 30 to 45 we change this to 15 so it goes from 30 to 45 or if we wanted from 30 to 60 we would change this to 30 or 45 and then take us from 30 to 75 so I'm just gonna leave it at 128 and keep it at 0 so now the other thing we have to do is position Z and this is the exact same as X except except instead of I it is going to be J so random next int 16 now the final thing that we have to do is this last line so I'm just gonna highlight it and copy it and paste it right in now you need to replace this this is the the block that's being generated so we want plutonium dot block ID so that'll generate plutonium with the block ID and this is a uh, this number right here is how much can be found at one time so for example if you're just walking along and you find plutonium there can be a max amount of 32 blocks there or if you set it to 5 the max amount can be 5 so I'm just gonna leave it at or 16 now we have to edit some of the, or all of these properties for this generate so first we need a world object and to get the world object you have to get the minecraft instance and find the current world so the way you do that is first I'm gonna make a world object in our class so world and then world and this just makes a variable named world and then this is the type world so and the way you get the world is in mod loader there is a method called get minecraft instance and right here and it returns the minecraft so I'll show you so in your constructor I'm gonna put world equals mod loader dot get minecraft instance and then the world and the world is just a variable in in the minecraft instance and if you want to look for yourself just open up minecraft dot java close this and scroll all the way to the bottom and about line 640 or at line 640 is the world so there it is so now since we have the current world we're playing in we can replace world object with world because we named it world if we were to name it world 2 we'd put world 2 and world 2 but I'm just gonna leave it world keep it simple and then rand is just the random object and our random object is not called rand it's called random so replace with random and then these three we replaced with position X, position Y, and position Z, just like that. And the one last thing you have to do is make sure up here, but after package, if you put this line before package, you will get a compile error and you will be stumped for a while as to why you're getting it. So anyways, just we're going to type import java.util.random, and we're just importing the random class so we can use it. If you didn't import it, it wouldn't know what a random object is, so that's why we're importing it. Now, that should be all you have to do to make your own block uh, generate. So I'm just going to recompile it real fast, and hopefully uh, I can find you guys some. Okay, wait for it to recompile, and it looks like no errors. So just wait for the server. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to run this to test it. Okay, just going to put test. 
wait for it to generate. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can find some plutonium here quick. Um, well, it doesn't look like there's any real close, so I'm going to go to, uh, I just generated this world right before uh, I made the tutorial, so I didn't have to spend an hour looking for some plutonium, so I did happen to find some plutonium up here on the cliff face here, so there's some plutonium, and then I also ended up finding some underground, so I'll show you guys that, just so you guys can believe that this actually works and come down here a ways and I found a bunch of plutonium down here so anyways uh... looks like it's working so uh... wish you guys luck on uh... your modding and uh... hope this helps so I'll see you again at another tutorial thanks for watching